Now to the issue of inter-office relationships raised by David Letterman's admitted affairs. In this day and age, what are the rules? Here's NBC's Chris Jansen. Through 27 years on late night TV, David Letterman remained a notoriously private star, which is why his very public revelation on Thursday came as such a surprise. I have uh, had sex with women who work for me on this show. Now, my response to that is, yes, I have. The admission brought on by an extortion attempt put the man behind the desk in the hot seat. You would think that these lessons would be learned from prior example, but it seems that we keep repeating the same mistakes. For years, Letterman had mined others' romantic entanglements for laughs, from Bill Clinton to Bill O'Reilly. Now, overnight, Letterman became the punchline. If you came here tonight for sex with a talk show host, you've got the wrong studio. All right, sir. There's a new book out called Why Women Have Sex that has a list of 237 reasons why women have sex. And Letterman knows the top ten. Funny stuff, but not everybody's laughing. Workplace romances may be common, but they can also be complicated, especially when one of the people involved is the boss. Letterman isn't just the star of Late Night. He owns the company that produces it. And one of the women involved is Stephanie Burkett. She's a former intern and personal assistant to Dave, who ended up making frequent on-air appearances. I love it! Even if the relationship is perfectly consensual between the superior and the subordinate, there's still third parties out there, other employees who are concerned that I'm being disadvantaged because I'm not willing to do what the employee who's going to bed with you is willing to do. Which may be why Letterman, after the jokes, turned serious. Uh, hope to protect my job. All of it raising a serious question. With 40% of people admitting to workplace affairs, what are the real dangers of Cupid in the cubicle? For today, Chris Jansing, NBC News, Los Angeles. Psychiatrist Dr. Gail Saltz is a today contributor, and Nicole Williams is the author of Girl on Top, Your Guide to Turning Dating Rules into Career Success. Good morning to both of you. Good, Good morning. morning. Okay, experts, let's take a look at the numbers. CareerBuilder.com says that 8 million Americans enter into a work romance every year and that 42% have dated their boss. Does the fact that it happens all the time make it okay, Gail? Absolutely not. It does happen a lot, but it doesn't mean there aren't big psychological pitfalls and a lot of fallout that can happen at the office. People get angry. They feel envious. People who do it get robbed of their feeling of confidence. Did I get this promotion because I'm really good, or did I get this promotion because I slept with the boss? Or yeah. did you not get the promotion because so-and-so slept with the boss, right, yeah. Nicole? Yeah, and that's a great question. And, and yes, there is hostility that's built. I agree with Gail. It is about your personal feeling of confidence in you know, actual output at work, but really it is also about the people around you who are envious, who are questioning whether or not you really have talent, or if you just got the promotion because you the boss. So you two are backing the argument that we've been hearing that it creates a hostile work environment. It's interesting though that men don't have that same view. A lot of about the Letterman case anyway, a lot of men are saying, you know, how could he be, um, if in fact it's true, extorted by somebody in his own company. But women seem to be saying this. Why women? Uh, I think because women are in the position of feeling that it's most often that a man is the boss, mm. still today, and they're feeling that the man has the power, the man has, maybe they want to be appreciated, admired, they want want to be uh, have some of that power too and so unconsciously it may motivate a woman to do something that really isn't great for her isn't great for her career and I think women are, are aware of this that they can be drawn into something that maybe isn't so smart so for the them. idea is that it creates this unlevel playing field that's difficult for the women even to say no yes, yes. absolutely mm -hmm. especially when there's a reporting relationship can you imagine saying no to a potential advance and there are policies there is legislation out there protecting people but I think by by and large, you know, there is a, a social feeling of, you know, indebtedness mm. that can sometimes lead a young woman to do something that they don't want to do. Well, well certainly not, this is not the end of this. No. I'm certain we're going to hear much more about this. Well, thank you so much for helping us understand a little bit more about this issue. I'm certainly we'll talk to you again and again. And Dr. Gail Saltz and Nicole Williams, thank you.